University, we're sitting over there, our principal and dean of management economics. Um, so yeah, first of all, we will talk about uh, about the mission of our of our project. Then we'll give you an overview of how we have developed over the last few years. Uh, then we talk about last year's event, the outcome of it. Um, then we will talk about this year's event, which will happen in March. And the last part, why should we always become involved? So first of all, our mission is that we want to offer a platform for a discussion of global socio-economic and political uh, events, basically between students and, and uh, academia and business leaders, as we think there's still need for that, especially in London. There's a lot of specialized conferences, such as the UCL Finance Conference or LSC Alternative Investment, but none of these really cover a broad range of topics, so uh, we, we thought we, 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 see, we saw the need for that as well. Um, and our main goal, as you can see in the end, is engage, inspire and educate through presentations on the day itself, breakout sessions, uh, networking and so on, and also basically between the students so they can enlarge their networks, uh, not only professionally but also on a personal level. So the way we basically got to our symposium is that uh, I met a few uh, students in the beginning of my first year, one of them was Oliver Harris, and uh, we were both quite ambitious when it came to financial markets, so we uh, founded an investment club with the aim to invest into the, the real markets, uh, had weekly meetings where we presented each other different industries, and what shares we should invest, and so on. And after a few months, we basically realized that uh, we went to a few events in London and city and firms and, and other employees, and we kind of realized that the links between Royal Holloway and the city are not really, really strong, so we kind of wanted to improve that and start with on-campus events. So our first event was with Barclays. Uh, we had the recruitment team over and also uh, uh, the head of identity and communications and they gave a speech on their company, on the graduate program and so on. We had, then we also invited over um, the World Bank advisor and the uh, chief editor of a shares magazine in London. And after that we realized that there is a potential that we could possibly go into the city and organize a big event which in the end then became the London Economic Symposium 2013. Um, so that happened, that took place last year on the 23rd of March at Millbank Centre. Uh, but uh, Sophie will also talk about that later and as it was quite a great success last year we are planning to do another one this year and then basically keep it running over the next years, decades and so on. Um, to give you a better overview about last year's symposium, some of you might have already seen it, we had a filming crew over from Germany who uh, produced, which produced a video about the event it's rather long, it's 13 minutes, so uh, I'll just start with it and then if you get bored, hopefully not, I can also open, just click through it and so you get a good overview. with leaders with prominence in their fields. 
Let's start off with Europe today. This crisis is by far not over. One of the byproducts of the crisis that we in the financial services sector have to deal with is the image of our industry. Bankers, in some cases, have been what I call autistic to society, not listening to what society is saying, is saying and not making the adjustments uh, in their organizations quick enough. That's changed very substantially and happily one sees positive momentum. What we do as a global law firm is that we uh, provide services to clients who are doing complex cross-border uh, transactions or trying to sort out complex cross-border messes that they've uh, got into in one way or another. Um, I want to ask what are some of the problems and but what are also some of the benefits of English common law in terms of um, contracting compared to other jurisdictions? Maybe my question is to Mr. Booth. Um, I'm curious when we were talking about the important role of regulation, what is your view about it? Are you welcoming it? Do you think that it will help insurance industry to be better regulated? Thank you. Yeah. How do you think of, see the effect of the financial crisis on the energy sector, and specifically returning to fossil fuels as opposed to renewables? And how long do you have to make do with the dirt environment that you are making? Thank you. I'm Simon Halloway, I'm a lecturer of several of these students at Royal Holloway in economics. Now, one of the things I was wondering about, like, what kinds of professional services are being engaged by sovereigns engaging with private firms internationally? What kinds of opportunities are there for the students here? Thank you. In terms of strengthening the core, how do you look at this? You simplify, you standardize, you consolidate and automate. It's not rocket science, but it's an enormous challenge when you look at the globalization of of industry and, self and our customers. Investing in new paths to growth, this will support innovation, uh, how to capture new markets, look out for signals, who's looking at, who's developing analytics, look at the contribution IT can make to the processes. IT-led innovation will dominate going forward to a certain extent. The basis for every right. crisis Right. Financial crisis as well for this financial crisis have been wrong credit decisions. Big scale, small scale, that is the basis of all the crisis. Yeah. To, it has to do with responsibility and then it comes back to incentivization systems and how are people incentivized and what makes them tick. And we get into the bonus culture, we get into all kinds of things. Well, this is the agency problem that again we we'll get into. The, the agency problem managers against owners, which is maybe a big. And we get system. into the into the into the climate of times. Yeah. What is what is considered to be successful in, in the environment? It changes over time. But the, the, the development, what we've done over it really since 2008 and even probably before, is is the source of funding that we 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 we've gotten and obtained uh, is is has uh, dramatically uh, changed. We have uh, in uh, Germany observed in a different sector, in the banking sector, what harm can be done if you have artificially low interest rates and low funding in the so-called Landesbanken sector. Terrible. Because their banks have been able to refinance themselves on the back of the German taxpayer with artificially and no risk adjusted funding rates. And the same situation is a bit true right now for the corporate sector. You always seem to kind of make nice returns, but you do those for the wrong reasons on the basis of too low capital costs, and therefore you kind of do wrong entrepreneurial and wrong management decisions. And sometime the empire will strike back, and then you have got um, the next uh, bubble and the next crisis coming. This is an event that is encouraging students to think about the wider world. What's going on outside of their academic studies? What influences are shaping the world? It's excellent, it's been great, uh, great attendance, uh, nice people, um, good questions. Um, the food I haven't yet experienced, but uh, I've heard uh, that there's a lot of effort has gone into the organization and I congratulate all the initiatives for uh, kind of making this conference a success. What do we have to transfer and offer after years in the business is our experience. And the people coming into the labor market today, to share with them our experiences, the things where we've made mistakes or we've seen mistakes made, 
the strategies we've seen working, sharing this with the leaders of tomorrow is vitally important. now have most of the delegates back in the room, and um, so welcome to the afternoon of the London Economic Symposium. Before I get started, can I see a show of hands? Has anyone heard of behavioral finance or behavioral economics? Wow, so this is really, have you heard of it before you looked at the program for this talk and thought, what in the world is that? <laughs> a few less, maybe just a few hands, okay. You know, there's something about this field that I'd say is a bit recession proof because the more markets start to go crazy, the more market uncertainty there is, the more um, markets start to fall, that's when my group becomes busier and busier. That's, that's, when, that's when people turn to psychological explanations for why there are these overreactions in the market, why there's this irrational exuberance followed by extreme periods of panic. So it's obviously, certainly since 2008, been quite a busy time for the concept of corporate culture and corporate behavior with the subprime crisis, mis-selling in the UK of financial products, wiretap, wire stripping, money laundering, tax evasion. To what degree do we think that regulation is important, necessary, and should become more stringent than it is today? If you take the belief, the efficiency and transparency of markets, this something maybe was abused, or at least it was believed in as a concept that accordingly the markets were working relatively unfettered, that can be built back and regulation can take care of that. Appropriate pricing of credit risk, for example, to be more specific, to some extent that can be taken care of by regulation. However, if you take the softer part of what is the crisis, hurt behavior, for example. People thinking that if they do the same like someone else, that ethical standards are not so relevant because everybody does it. Can you handle that by regulation? Not really. I think there is a role for regulation. Um, I've worked with some industries that probably would have had the chance to, to come to the regulator with solutions that say, you know, let's work together and come with our own solutions so we don't have to just react to regulation, um, but they didn't do it. So, so I think from both sides, both from industry and from regulators, to see more engagement and joint um, kind of cooperation to come up with, with what will work best. The ECB and the Fed are working really hard to get the economy growing again. Um, but there, I also agree with Jeff that um, there's there's this tendency to overregulate when we are in, 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 in a bad state. Whereas if everything goes great, no one really cares about regulation, and, and this um, cyclicality of regulation is not good. We have experienced the loosest monetary policy in all of our lifetimes unprecedentedly loose monetary policy. So in many ways, um, we as you know, the Western world have been driving our capitalist car with one foot fully on the accelerator with all our quantitative easing and at the same time with the other foot, the money multiplier depression fully on the brake. Is that going to end in tears? Is that going to work well? well we don't know, and the likelihood is that yeah, this is just another cycle. Thank you. I really enjoyed the conference. It was really interesting to see uh, the different perspectives uh, from different industry leaders. I particularly really like the part of behavioral finance because that's something I study, and I thought. The way it was brought across by the speaker was amazing. This is a great, great event to have organized. We've got very high quality speakers here. So I think overall this is a big success and everybody should be proud of themselves. I've been to really many conferences, both organized by students and also organized by banks. And I must say that the organization of this conference was highly professional and one of the best I have ever attended. Two years ago. So we skipped that part. <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically now I'll hand over to Brad and I'll basically still talk about that. Uh, just to give you a few key facts, I mean I'm sure you've gotten quite a good view on uh, what it looked like last year. Um, just a few facts. So the topic, as it was mentioned throughout the, the conference as well, was the road to recovery from the economic crisis and we can 
we try to capture different perspectives from different industry leaders, basically. So we try to kind of have insurance in there, academia, banking, and also a private company. Uh, we had 200 students from all over the world, so literally from the States, uh, all of Europe, Asia. Uh, we even received a few applications from uh, Africa, but for, unfortunately didn't work out in the end. But like, kind of shows that we really try to spread the word all over the world. Over 40 universities in the end, from, uh, so, so it's like mostly like let's say 15, 20 from, from Britain, but then the other ones from abroad as well. We had 11 speakers, we had corporate and academic sponsors, so we had uh, Barclays, Allianz, Oracle as corporate sponsors and also Morningstar and we were also supported by the Economics Department of Royal Holloway and the Alumni Fund uh, which also subsidised, together with the Economics uh, Department, subsidised the entrance fee for, for students so they could attend the event. And we also like we received only positive feedback by Sense of Bad if I say it that way, but maybe the other ones kept it back. But uh, so yeah, altogether I think it was a great success and that's why we want to carry on with it. Uh, so that's how we get to this year's conference. And over to Sophie. So this year's conference is gonna talk about the European Union and as we all know the European Union had quite a difficult time, which is why we think it's important to assess these issues and discuss how the European Union is going to develop in the future. So um, basically we have different questions regarding the political situation, economic situation, sociological, soci sociological aspects. And um, like, for example, here's an example question, should the EU members countries be responsible for the debts of the EU as a whole? Or um, we look at other questions concerning for example, the relationship between the EU and Switzerland, or um, how countries are going to be affected in terms of loss of sovereignty, and how they can like retain their culture within each country. And um, basically, um, this year's conference is going to take place on the 15th of March, 2014, and it will be in central London again. And our aim, our target student, like we're targeting students from undergraduate and postgraduate, but also students that have recently graduated. And um, people will have to apply. And based on these applications, we're going to hopefully have enough applications to choose who can attend the event. And we're also, again, aiming at about 200 delegates. Um, what makes, I think, our conference special is that we're not we're not just from one university but even our team were composed of universities from London, even outside of London, even outside of the UK and we're really trying to create a platform for um, students all over the world to participate um, because they are ambitious and want to become involved and are also concerned about So now I'd like to talk briefly about um, Royal Holloway possibly getting involved in the symposium um, in, in a greater way, um, particularly about the kind of skills and benefits that we as an organisation can offer to students here um, and perhaps the wider Royal Holloway community. Um, so first, in terms, of, in terms of Royal Holloway students, we have now a committee of around 35 people involved. Last year it was a much smaller committee um, and the reason we've, um, we've really tried to integrate as many people as possible into the committee this year is that you know, we want people to be able to take the idea and continue it when we're gone. Um, in effect we've got around 20 of our committee or so who are actual Royal Holloway students but then in there we've also got students from other universities, LSC, UCL, Imperial. Um, and also some um, foreign universities as well, such as Maastricht. Um, basically, I think it goes without saying that being involved in the uh, London Economic Symposium organising committee has given people so far hopefully hard and soft skills. Um, contacting people of importance is always quite a daunting task, especially when we might all be applying for jobs. 
and we may wish to, uh, we, you know, we may need uh, to practice the confidence uh, or build the confidence to speak to certain people in certain roles. And I believe that this, this organisation can greatly help with that. Um, also, obviously the hard skills, anyone who's involved in finance and legal, which is the team that I head, is um, very active in terms of computer skills, very active in terms of accounting, monitoring budgets, etc. Um, also creating uh, written proposals for sponsors. Um, so, in, in my opinion, to have this as a conversation for someone, you know, when you go to an interview these days, a lot of it is not just about even just the hard and soft skills, a lot of it is about who are you as a person, what extra things have you done to really improve yourself. And I think that this is a great conversation to have with employers, being involved. It gives you an, an interesting facet, let's say, to your person that you can use and then you can say, you know, I met such and such a person and I discussed this with them. And I think that's a great thing to have. As I've mentioned already, the interaction with business leaders is, is really unparalleled in this area. With this conference, you will get access to people who are incredibly well known, incredibly prominent, um, and we're very honoured to, to be able to invite the people we are able to invite along to this event. And you know, our committee benefit from that. Um, the experience of responsibility, so we're currently um, applying to a, a registered charity. Uh, it's a new format which the uh, Charity Commission of the UK has, has come up with. Um, which is a uh, charitable incorporated organisation, CIO. It's brilliant because you don't have to file with uh, Companies House anymore, you just file directly to them. But basically, the idea is that we, we're all involved in the process of keeping accounts, of keeping order, of contacting people, of realising if we contact a sponsor, for example, we must stick to that word. And I think that's, as well, a great kind of experience of responsibility that one would have in a, in a job after university. Um, also, it's an exciting activity. We had a, a team building event on Saturday, for instance, where you know we tried to integrate the team with each other. We wanted people to meet each other. We hope that people are excited by the idea of a symposium, are excited about being involved in something different. Um, so that's benefits for committee members. At this stage, um, I would say the most important thing to talk about would be the benefit for Royal Holloway attendees. So students here who, who want to come, as, as Mateus mentioned, the university combined the, from the uh, uh, Alumni Fund and the um, Economics Department last year sponsored 50 students to attend. And that meant they were able to cover our costs for those students to attend, so we didn't have to dig into our budget. And Royal Holloway, in fact, then made it free for uh, these students to attend the event. And, you know, as Matteo said, we also got lots of positive feedback in terms of they felt that that was worth, um, that was worth their, you know, them to spend their time on that day, obviously. And, and also for Royal Holloway, it was, a, it was an excellent, um, hopefully an excellent uh, experience to, to be involved in, in that sense. Um, in terms of what we want to do, we are, as I said, the majority um, Royal Holloway students, and we really want this to not be another event where, you know, Matthias and I have, have both applied to LSE um, UCL conferences. I was unsuccessful in my first year here. And although I you know it shouldn't matter, I felt that maybe the fact that I wasn't from UCL, maybe the fact that I wasn't from LSE, or Imperial, or Oxford, or Cambridge, maybe that held me back slightly in my application, you know. Um, and I really don't want, as well as the rest of us, we really do not want that to become the case with this event. We really want to open the access and to have a, a larger level of inclusion, a greater level of inclusion for talented students from universities which are not as mainstream and are not as, you know, they haven't got the A star 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 reputations, but we really want to include them. Um, we want to offer them the ability to enlarge the network, you know, um, because Royal Holloway isn't, it's a University of London university which isn't placed in the centre of London, there is um, a disconnect in a sense with, with the city. And we really want to try as much as we can through these events to, mean, to, to offer Royal Holloway uh, students the, not just the ability to, but also the idea of going into the city and attending one of these events, which otherwise you would have to actively search for. Um, also, there are wide educational opportunities. There were so many interesting conversations uh, that took place between very high-profile speakers and our students especially, um, because they were offered this opportunity uh, at the last event, and we really want that to continue in the future. As I say, meeting leading people from business and academia, and great insights into practical solutions. I think one of the main advantages of this conference, as well as all the networking, 
opportunities, as well as the educational side of it, is that to hear from um, to hear from leaders in industry on Bloomberg, for example, which is where you can get the factual stuff, is not as useful to us because you know we're all at the beginning of our careers. We are all students who are looking at a very difficult time to get to jobs. It's a very difficult search at the moment, and I think to sort of hear the kind of inspirational dialogue that goes on at these events is really, hopefully, encouraging for students and will inspire them to go the extra mile to achieve what they really want to. And so that's Royal Holloway attendees. Now, um, Royal Holloway University, so this is more specifically Royal Holloway, um, we feel that there's definitely a parallel reputational benefit of of being involved in this. We really want Royal Holloway to be involved in a way that we can present them. Um, in a, in a, we can offer Royal Holloway as a university, as we're all part of the institution, um, a, a greater presence at the event. We really want that to be the case. Um, and we feel that the reputational benefits of being involved in a conference, being directly involved in a conference that has the, let's say, the, the, um, the prestige of a, an event that LSE runs or an event that UCL runs or an event that indeed St. Gala Symposium, which is one of the most famous and biggest um, uh, student conferences in the world, uh, which is run in Switzerland with a, a budget of around 6 million euros for a three day event, um, which is much more than ours, unfortunately, at the moment, but <laughs> we'll hopefully increase that soon. But um, just to, we, we really want our other way to be involved because of this kind of parallel in terms of reputation. Um, the speakers we had, now this is not to boast, but the speakers we had in 2000, in, in our event in, in March this year, were of the same level, if not higher, and I would probably go for the latter, than any other London conference. Um, and we really want to kind of use that to our best advantage and, so, and to present ourselves better, and for that we need the support. Um, we also want to, as I said before, and as Matt has pertained to strengthen the link with the city employees, we feel as though if Royal Holloway is branded on this event that's held in the city, that's a big event, that it is the, the go-to event, it's the event to go to for students, we feel that the city employees will recognise it straight away. They already have recognised it by supporting us in 2013, and we feel as though we can go even further with that. Um, also, the propagation of Royal Holloway quality students, as, as we mentioned, Mateus and I first came with this idea from visiting a Barclays Wealth event where we met people who we brought onto campus um, in our first year at Royal Holloway in 2011, uh, which seems a long time ago now. Um, but um, we, we you know, wanted to kind of bring our talents and say, look, we can do stuff and we want to bring you here. And we want to kind of do the reverse now. We want to say, right, we're here in your face, you know, the city, in a positive way, obviously. And, and this is what this is created by the majority of our holiday students. We really want to show you what we can do. Um, and also, obviously, there's an involvement of uh, postgraduate and also PhD students. So we're a very wide ranging conference in terms of audience. We had a lot of PhD students, a lot of postgraduate students last year as well as undergraduate students. So, you know, it's an opportunity, I suppose, for people to talk about their postgraduate experiences as well as their undergraduate experiences and for there to be a good mix there. Um, we have been, because of our success, we have been, um, we have attracted the attention, let's say, of some very high-ranking other universities. And this worries us. We really, as we set out to make this the event that will take Royal Holloway into the forefront. And we're really worried at the moment that there's a risk of it being taken over. For instance, Matthias and I are both third year students at Royal Holloway studying economics, and we will be leaving after this year. And if there is no one here to run this when we're gone, what will it be? You know? And we really want people who are who are very passionate to, to you know to, to get involved, to, to attend this year, to see what it's like, you know, to think about really what can they do with it when we're gone. And, um, and, and hopefully then it becomes a greater and greater asset for the future, for the university. Like for, just one quick addition to that, like Sophie, for example, attended last year, and she studies at UCL, but she attended last year, really liked it, and kind of approaches this year and said, look, uh, I'm really interested in joining the committee because it seems to be a good thing. So we kind of hope that we get some experience with uh, Royal Holloway students. 
uh, also this year because in the end, as you mentioned, we want to make it an intercollegiate uh, committee, but at the same time, our main idea when we found it was also to kind of bring world all the way into the city. And I think uh, we've been quite successful last year. And just to kind of give you an idea as well, when Oli mentioned now, for example, uh, we approached uh, the chairman of UBS as well, we kind of waited for an answer, but he, for example, said he heard of our event last year, even though we never approached him last year. So it kind of shows that even within a year, the word like uh, widely spread all over the, or at least Europe. So I think if we can make it a success again this year, it'll be even better next year, and then we go on, go on, go on, and hopefully, yeah. So we're the best student conference. And the best conference in the world. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> so if you have any questions for us, you can ask them now. Uh, if not, we would then also... We can also open it up for uh, our two gentlemen sitting over there. So anything <laughs> more uh, related to uh, university matters, feel free to, to ask them because it's a very rare event that you can talk to them and I'll probably do it now. And don't feel shy, you know, nothing can happen. Let's finish on the symposium um, first because it, it, it very, very good presentation. But I don't think you yet really told these these guys, the audience, what they have to do to get involved. So if I was walking up, yes, yeah, somebody said that. Thank you. <laughs> Who said that? So if I was walking, out, so if I was walking out the room now, I wouldn't know what to do to get involved. So I think. You could talk from so basically, for this year, the recruitment is already over because we sent out quite a few emails and put up posters and. Uh, that's where we are right now. We had a but recruitment event a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago in the same room. Um, for your attendance, if you want to attend the event, we'll definitely advertise it again. Applications are not open yet. We'll put it up on our website as well and we will make sure that, for example, also with the help of Shireen, who's always very, very helpful and we're very thankful for that as well, uh, we kind of manage to spread the word all over the university. So we literally just have to open the applications as well. If you need some help, uh, just go onto our website as well. If you Google London Economic Symposium, you'll find our names uh, with our email addresses as well. We're always willing to give you uh, personal advice as well, how you can improve your application so that you have higher chances to attend the event as well. And I guess as soon as we're kind of done with this year's conference, we will then uh, make sure that next year we start immediately after the event again. And that's when we would then again do a similar event and uh, explain you how you can get involved with the 2015 symposium or the committee at least. It's definitely an ongoing process and you know we want people to buy into the, the idea of it going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. form a legacy. But you two aren't going to be here next year so who's going to be here at all? Well, all Charlotte and We've got quite a few people in here. They're already first years now. We specifically also chose first years because we knew that we would go away. So, for example, she she works in our team. We have people up there as well. Like, there's quite a few from the committee in here as well. And uh, we're trying to be doing a master's degree. And she's a first year, so now no, we. No, I'll be uh, <laughs> maybe. I might go back to lunch. <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> Here. I mean, is everybody from economics or are people from other disciplines? Because you can think about some parts of geography and politics. So, you, you know, these, these overlap the sort of issues that are here in the, in the 2014 programme. So, are, are you appealing to people outside the economics? We do that, but we sometimes also experience the problem that when we as students approach other departments, that there's unfortunately no response. Or we go there quite often, talk to them, they promise us to do something, but in the end, nothing happens because. Use it, yeah. <laughs> now, just like, obviously we try, because sure. we don't want to limit it only to economic yeah. students. We also have a, psycho, a psychology student and so on and so on, but it's more like, it, we try, we really try, but if we don't get any feedback or, or no, no students in the end, it's, it kind of makes it impossible for us to interpret. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure we can help on that. And um, I mean, the, the, the point about the sort of big problems that I guess are addressed in the symposium is, is it that they're not going to be answered by a single discipline? You know, there, there, there are multiple ways of looking at these problems, and 
It's about bringing all of those parties together. We kind of, because our name is very strong, if you read London Economics, yeah. because a lot of people think, ooh, it's only about economics. Yeah. So we kind of, through our slogan, we kind of try to get a bit away from that. Yeah. And also yeah. now, by, by having these three different sections, we try to attract people from like with different backgrounds and. And as as the World Economic Forum is also not about economics, our conference is about economics. Oh yeah, just one thing. Like we we got an email today as well. Like uh, that we got a speaker confirmed. He's for example, his, his name is Simon Anhold. He's an independent policy advisor, and he speaks basically every year at the World Economic Forum. He sits on the European Parliament for culture, cultural issues, and he is an author. And he agreed to speak, which is a great honor because usually these are the kind of guys who charge ten, twenty thousand pounds. But as we are students, as we are a charity, they're willing to do that. They're willing to spend a full day with us in that venue and and kind of tell tell us their their visions about the future of the European mm -hmm. Union. So, uh, and it's just a, a running process as well. Yeah. So, so things are starting to roll in now, and we hope it's going to sort of take more of a form. And, uh, so you, uh, sorry, I'm going to monopolise the question. So not <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the, the premise that you had at the Millbank Centre, I mean, have you, have you thought about, I mean, do people sponsor that? I mean, I, I saw gold and silver sponsors. Yeah. There. So they're, they're coming across the premises and things exactly. like that. Yeah. Plus, uh, there's a ticket as well. It cost £25 last year, yeah. which is uh, considerably lower than other conferences, yeah. also student conferences. Yeah. And we all usually try to, to uh, make it as low as possible, mm -hmm. but depending obviously how much corporate sponsors or academic sponsors we get. The reason why we went for a uh, non-academic building is because we think a lot of students enjoy to go to a mm -hmm. professional mm -hmm. venue, kind of experience yeah. a professional attitude. And, and whereas if you go onto a campus or into a lecture hall, it's like, ooh, I do that every week, five times. So it's more like... Yeah. It's, it's a bit different. It's kind of the, you know, we want the event. We want the feel. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we want the event to I mean, one, I mean, one of the things, we, you know, I'm sure we and, and the other institutions have helped you with is, um, you know, alumni who go on to, you know, great positions in the city and, and elsewhere in London, you know, have fabulous premises. I mean, they're, they're really nice. And, um, you know, they, they will often host something like this, if it's a weekend or whatever, I guess. So, um, you know, the alumni office, I'm sure, could help track down some individuals. I mean, the School of Management had their advisory board meeting in a, was it a bank? Or, or bank, a bank? Canada office. Bank Canada office. No, lovely office. So, I mean, yeah, they've, all got good, they've all got good premises. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, can you talk to us about the application process and what are the criteria we have to fulfill in order to be accepted on this? Okay, so we're actually last year we um, we had a, a relatively simple application process. Um, and that was that uh, students had to fill their details out and also put um, motivational uh, comments. You know, they, we sort of looked through these and when, when you ask for a motivational kind of text, you often get a feel for, is someone actually bothered, or are they just doing this as kind of a, an afterthought? And so our priorities were for the people who had um, put some effort into it. Now this year, we want to try and make it more sophisticated. Last year, we were a small group, a very small group, with limited means to do any kind of profile checking or anything like that. And this year, so we're, we're currently in, um, in talks um, with um, certain companies which may be able to, I can't really provide exact details, but may be able to provide a more, um, a broader view on people. And so um, that, that, that could mean it's more sophisticated this year. Um, although I think we were very, very happy with the quality of the students who came last year. Um, we have some very good students from Royal Holloway attending, in attendance. Um, and so we just really want to keep that up. And again, as we say, we really don't want to make it an exclusive event. We want to make it a, a very useful event, but we don't want to exclude people for um, things, you know, prejudices and things like that. So we, you know, such as which university do you attend, as I said earlier. Um, and so we really want to consider everyone on an application by application basis. And I think a motivational statement, we're considering a CV certainly this year, because uh, we feel that the way someone 
Christmas completes the CV, shows a lot about that person. Um, are they very um, are they very interested in what they're doing? Are they very are they very determined to put across the best parts of them in a very short format? If you know, if you've been to an investment banking CV workshop, for example, they'll say you've got to put it all on one page, which can be very difficult if you're like me and start out with four pages. Because uh, I just <laughs> write a lot about nothing. Um, but so yeah, um, but but it really does help. So if people have done that type of thing, you can very quickly tell, and um, and hopefully we can integrate that. Yes, I have a question about the CVs. Like firstly, I will not have a such good CV as second year in first year because you have like second years and first year, third years are going to have internships. Mm -hmm. First year, I don't have the chance actually to apply mostly mm -hmm. to the firms. So don't you think that you're going to exclude some of first years? Or mm -hmm. you're just going to choose the best of the best of the best of the first years? I, I guess that's not going to be the case because you can then also, between the first years, you can kind of compare. So if we say we go, like we, we have ratio, that we say we have a certain amount of first years in there, then we just look at the different first year applications and then we can kind of filter it out. And also what he, I think, tried to imply is that we're currently in, 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 uh, in talks with companies who might be able to also provide internships. So for example, third year students are not very interested <coughs> in them because most of us want to go into a graduate position or we go on with masters or something else, whereas second years and especially first years are more interesting to them. So we'll see what the outcome of this will be, but if that's the case, obviously then for you the chances are probably higher to get in because we kind of have to give them a certain amount of, of people to select. Them. Yeah, I think general guidance would be, you know, I mean, a CV is not, it's not a biography of that, it's what skills and examples can you come up with for those skills? And I think that anyone, you know, if you've even done a Saturday job when you were at school, um, anyone can come up with something interesting, even if they've not done anything that's particularly related. And you can say, you know, I, I was in sales and I, you know, sold this, 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 and I developed this system and I thought this was an inefficient and I wanted to improve it by doing this, 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 and this. And I think that anyone kind of can see then that this person's obviously going to go into great things. It's more about potential than what you've actually achieved, because after all, we're all like sort of around, let's say around 20 years old. We've not had long to do things, so it's interesting. And just to add something to that, I mean, just I think that, although it's obviously not finalized yet, it's not going to be just on just on your CV. Like, you're not going to send your CV, it's just that there will be some kind of motivational, Absolutely. you know, mm -hmm. comments added to that and other, trying to incorporate other things mm -hmm. instead of just Exactly, you know, what A-levels are done. Um, <laughs> there's always also other creative ways of, uh, you know, convincing people. I mean, you find it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can record a video and send it to us, as whatever, you know, I mean, like, there's so many different ways. Like, if you look at other symposia, like St. Golden, they kind of do something similar as well. So they have to, for example, hand in a video with, with, uh, with where they talk about uh, the topic or stuff like that. So it doesn't mean that you're going to be automatically excluded just because you're thirsty and you don't have any, any experience at all. So don't worry about that. I was just, <clears throat> with regards to the students getting involved in the future, I just wanted to ask if you could elaborate a bit more on the specific managerial structure which you have set up uh, and the different committees so that the students could see where perhaps they We actually had specific. an organization which all in there, but it seemed, I think it's a computer, it's not a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we basically, they, they have it on their concept as well. Uh, we, we kind of try to make it as professional as possible. Uh, given our constraints, so we we obviously have like a structure that someone is the head of the symposium, and then we have different teams. Uh, so we have a finance and legal team this year. We have a symposium team and a public relations team, and then within those teams, we then split it into uh, different groups. So you can, for example, work in the sponsors team, where you uh, try to or where you approach sponsors, you go up to them, present your your symposium, you negotiate. Uh, about the different sponsorship levels and so on. Then we have accounts, so we have to do accounting as well in the end, because <laughs> otherwise we might just spend way too much money and don't get enough in. The whole thing with logistics, so we need to organize a venue, we need to organize transport and yeah, related to that. Then we have IT people, people who design our business cards, design our website and so on. And then the PR aspect, we need to advertise it. If we don't advertise it, then no one will attend. 
uh, also press department this year because uh, we, we see the need for more like press um, presence as well because that will help us eventually and it's very interesting also for these people because sometimes these high profile speakers tend to keep them a bit back if it's a very official setup but if it's more like a student setup they might just say something which they wouldn't say in other uh, in other occasions like well, for example last year we didn't we didn't even mention the date so we actually had the guy from Orec who presented to us slides which have never been present had never been presented before and the CEO of Orec only presented them the next day and <coughs> kind of didn't sell that very well but and then we approach speakers, so that's the speakers team, uh, make sure that they uh, get accommodation or that they get transport uh, and then applications as well, where we just kind of build up the whole applications process. So it's literally like whatever background you have in the end, uh, I'm sure we'll find something if you're enthusiastic enough and willing to put in quite a few hours per day and still don't neglect your university work because you still need to get your degree in the end. That's why we're here. So. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the London School of Economics having their own conference. However, they have the LSE attached to the name. Do you think what Holloway needs to be attached to your LES to so advertise well, it? Just the LSE, the LSE conference is actually run by the students. <coughs> um, SU run things, so they have, they have LSE. Um, now we want to obviously offer Bar Holloway a big presence, um, but it still is the London Economic Symposium and we feel that it's more valuable to show that this is an, it's an independent initiative with, backed by the, the university in effect than to say, oh it's Royal Holloway, because after all, this could be easily organised by Royal Holloway. It's got a big budget, it's got loads of money, loads of people. You know, um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I mean, well, you make five million a year, so we don't bad. But um, like, it, it, it's a bit, it's a big university, it's a big organisation, by the way, and I think it's it kind of carries more weight, even though I say so myself. But it was kind of literally three friends, five friends, who got together. And, and, and from Royal Holloway and then propagated out and sort of the university said, you know what, we like that idea, we're going to back it and we're going to, and we're going to support it on. And then to connect it that way, then it becoming the Royal Holloway event, because then suddenly, you know, the little OMK investment club, the little four group, five group of friends just get swallowed up into it all and suddenly it's, it's like, okay, they did that, but so did every other university in the country, Warwick, for example, you know, they had a huge economic symposium. So. We also, as we discussed, the with the London Economic Symposium, we were already, you know, we were concerned initially about the fact that calling it the Economic Symposium was going to attract, was going to make people think it's just economics. And if we add Royal Holloway Economic Symposium, then, you know, it's kind of maybe suggest to people that it's just for Royal Holloway students, whereas we have the worldwide presence. And we have more financial freedom in the end as well, uh, because basically if, if you're let's say involved with university, sometimes some sponsors might be reluctant to support you because they support another university and so on and so on. So we literally we can do whatever we want to and as he mentioned we received feedback from the speakers last year that they basically said the reason why we attended your conference and participated was that we saw a certain like entrepreneurial spirit behind it. And I'm not saying that uh, societies are bad, not at all, I think they're great, but I think they pursue different goals. So for us it was literally the best option first to go with the investment club and now going into charity because of tax reasons and like whenever you mention charity a lot of people actually are uh, more open to it. We made yeah. experience that one sponsor last year said sorry we can't really support you because you're not a charity and your website is .com and not .org. We're like mm, it's a bit silly but anyway we had to accept it so we kind of try to you know, uh, well, I mean, the thing is, is that we are a charitable purpose. We are a charity. We made no profit last year. I mean, all the money was spent on what we were doing, um, and therefore, you know, we just retained a small amount, perhaps, to, to pay for the website this year, for instance. But um, we are a charitable purpose. We're doing hopefully something that people perceive as good, and therefore, if there's a, a legal structure that fits that and, and, and can be beneficial for the people who are supporting us, very kindly, then. Just with regards to the question to emphasize one more important point is that the London Economic Symposium, what distinguishes it from all other symposiums which we have mentioned, 
is that it's a student-organized symposium done by students for students and not any professionals helping them to organize it in any sense. So it's really something which we come together and organize it by ourselves. Um, greatly helps you to stand out for the future and obviously brings a lot of advantages in the way professionals approach us and see us. Um, so thereby we can have a much more intimate relation uh, with those people rather than you know, having this distance um, uh, from professionally organized uh, venues. So that's really the, the, the biggest point about um, why we don't want to attach any sticker to it like London Academy, like, like, um, like uh, specifically from the university, Royal Holloway uh, Symposium or whatever, LSE Symposium or whatever. But also the constraints of having to work um, within the framework of the Students' Union would not have permitted us to, to start us to have started off doing an investment club and also for doing the symposium, which is why we started off doing it on our own. Because otherwise I mean, the best example is just to be fair mentioned. I, I, I assume, for example, if it had been through the university organizing, I'm not sure if he would have said, look, uh, I'll do it for free. I, I don't know, but I'm just saying, like with students, whenever you mention the, the word student, they're like, oh, students, yeah, we have to support them, charity as well, great. So that's kind of. <laughs> we don't want to look desperate, but at the same time, it's more like, you know, these people kind of maybe feel like they yeah. need to support us. And Absolutely. I think, you know, like, to, let's use, uh, to use a bit of a, uh, an example from our uh, topics this year. So one of the things we want to discuss is should be. EU have the same relationship with the UK as Switzerland does with the EU, for example, bilateral contract. And that's the type of relationship we want with Royal Holloway. We want this kind of, you know, like we're both mutually beneficial to each other. You know, we, we can both offer each other a lot whilst maintaining our autonomy. And hopefully that will create a bigger piece of cake for us all to share, in effect. You know, let's have a larger, let's have a smaller slice of a bigger cake, that type of analogy. So, um, I think we can really make something great of this working together. And, yeah, thank you for everyone's time. And, and if, you, if you still if you have questions to absolutely, yeah, and Dean, go, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're here for as well. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, that's what we heard. But, <laughs> but I mean, maybe just before we do that, and I guess people may want to get away anyway, so we can take questions here yeah, formally or informally. Um, I guess you know, many academics, um, you know, in the department, in the college, uh, ourselves have organised events, you know, and um, it's a really nerve-wracking experience, you know, because it all stops with you guys organising it, success or failure. However good the speakers are, you know, they're going to turn up. What happens if you know there's snow that day and it all goes wrong? You know, there's so many things you worry about, and um, you're sort of glad when it's all over. So, uh, you know, actually, it's a remarkable achievement. From, from scratch to, to, to lay something on, um, with actually a stunning set of speakers. I mean, just seeing those 11 speakers there, uh, I think is truly impressive. I know other societies, the PIR Society, for example, who invite ambassadors to be here, say there's a real, uh, there's a real window of opportunity as a student to be able to ask those people to come to your event. <coughs> the moment you're an employee and you start getting paid, they won't want to know you. So uh, make the most of it while you can. And um, uh, you know, it's a real privilege to be able to do that. And I think everything you said about the branding and so on, I think, you know, is absolutely right. It's, it's really played into that, that window of opportunity. Um, the, one, the one thing that struck me is that, that these are all people who are, are leaders and, and prominent, um, prominent leaders now. Um, the people in the room, the people that attend, are going to be the leaders of tomorrow. And it would be interesting to perhaps think about um, <coughs> uh, some sort of competition. It might be an essay, it might be a, 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 th a thought piece, fairly short, um, that could identify at least one of the leaders of tomorrow and sort of give them a bit of prominence you know, amongst the, the 10, 11, 12 um, very high profile speakers, because actually. All of this is about developing tomorrow's talent as well as learning mm -hmm. from people who are running here today. So, um, I mean, we wish you well. Um, the alumni fund, uh, which is essentially former students giving money to the university to pass on to events like this, is, is still there. Um, you, you know them to contact Bob can help you with that. Um, but also, I'm, I'm sure there are many um, former students from this university and others that, that would. So we wish you well and, and want to support you in some way. And I think if we can 
uh, I think you made the point, it's very important you do it yourselves. You don't just get professionals to do it. But if we can give you some pointers or some contacts or, or a way of going about it, you know, do, do ask us. But, you know, all the very best. I think we should give them a, well, you lot and, and anybody else in the room who's help. I mean, you know, a round of applause. I think your achievements are really well. So, uh, you know, do something. Oh, thank you. Thanks a lot.